This is my new dog. This is Milo. His name's Milo. Hey, Milo. I'm just joking. Her name's June. Come on, Milo. Right now, there are too many tutorials treating people like little babies. I'm not gonna do it anymore. I'm not gonna hold your hand. I'm not gonna treat you like a little child. I'm not gonna show you flashy things to keep your attention, okay? Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna show you what's what. I'm gonna show you, by the end of this video, you are going to have a job in animation as a storyboard artist. Animation, what is it? Where does it come from? By the end of, what is storyboarding? How does it happen? How did I get the job? How do other, how did other people get the job that I know? Oh, a lot of you might know this information already, but I'm just gonna go over it. In order for you to understand what storyboarding is, because I didn't understand what it was at first, you have to go to the beginning of the animation pipeline. In this case, we're gonna be talking about animation. <laughs> June, hey, hey, shut up, shut up. So cute. So right now we're gonna be talking specifically about storyboarding for animation, not for feature film or anything like that. So it differs into different fields, it differs to which projects you get onto. But I'm just gonna go by uh, the projects that I was on. I'm gonna treat you like a little baby and we're gonna take this little baby steps. Writing the script. The script comes first. Here's a little example of a script. Before any art is done, the script is written a long time in advance, most likely. All right, and once you got all the lines down, once you got all the writing done and figured out, then you go to voice acting. This is basically the pipeline of what Voltron was. So that's kind of what I'm going off of right now. A lot of shows do it like this. For the voice acting, you're gonna be putting inflections in specific spots. You're, you're gonna be working with the voice actors to get the, you're, you're basically getting the acting before you ever have to draw the acting. The reason I'm explaining voice acting right now is because as a storyboard artist or a storyboard revisionist, you're gonna have to be dealing with the audio clips. And what you're drawing, it's going to be a reflection of the voice acting, right? If they have inflection somewhere, you're gonna have to draw that inflection. All right, and then after that comes the storyboard. Storyboards basically are the rough animation. What you see on the final screen, what you see on Netflix or a TV show, the final animation wasn't just drawn that way. They had to do very rough pitches, very rough animations to get to that point. And so that's essentially what storyboards are. Typically, storyboards and animation, if you have, if you have a, a mass of people working towards a specific uh, project, it needs to be a pipeline. So there's often more than one storyboard artist. And so what that looks like is you're gonna get the script and you're gonna have a highlighted section in that script and you're gonna do that section. And then some other storyboard artists are going to be taking care of the other sections. Once all the storyboard artists are done storyboarding their sections, they're all going to turn in their sections to the storyboard director. So at that point, the director is gonna be taking those sections, putting them together, kind of understanding the overall flow and changing some things here and there. So the director basically needs an assistant to help with that, and that's called a revisionist, a storyboard revisionist. All right, I put a little star right here next to the storyboard revisionist because that is the, typically that is the, the gateway to becoming a storyboard artist. And I know storyboard revisionist kind of seems like it's up on the, the ranking scale right here. It, it's not really, it's not, uh, typically the storyboard revisionists are not paid as much as the storyboard artists. But their jobs, uh, storyboard revisionist jobs can be a little bit more, it can, it can almost be a little bit more difficult sometimes. It depends which project you're on. On a, on a project, there's gonna be multiple storyboard directors and multiple storyboard revisionists sometimes. All right, real fast, I'm just gonna go over the different types of boards. Here's, this is what it looks like for, for typical, uh, typical storyboards. This kind of this kind of looks old school here. All right, that's cool. That's an old, older way to do it. It's not necessarily older. It's just it's just less complicated. All right, but now let's take a look at this. This is called an animatic. It's basically the storyboards put together and uh, edited to look like a, a. It's a rough animation. This has movement to it. It has timing to it. You don't need this. Uh, you don't specifically need this in a portfolio, but it definitely feels nice. Okay, and if you want to go a little bit more complicated than that, uh, Korra, th the team that works for Studio Mir, the people that animated Avatar and Korra and Voltron, their storyboards, which are the boards that I learned from, I worked with the team as a storyboard revisionist, their boards are on a completely different level. Their layer movements, the characters are nearly finished animation sometimes. Yeah, uh, layer movements, camera movements, just the whole thing. And even this scene right here, this isn't even that complex compared to this, the boards that I saw in Voltron. Some of the boards I saw in Voltron were just insane. Okay, let's just go over what a storyboard revisionist job is. Just very simply, the story 
storyboard artist will take the script, draw what they imagine is happening. All the camera angles, all the actions, all this stuff. But often when they draw, it feels kind of loose. Sometimes things can look a little bit ambiguous. The most important shots are the ones where the characters stop moving and they're really close to the camera. Okay, so this shot, for example, it needs to be very clear. The camera is still on this person. The character needs to be on model. If, if it's not on model and they send it overseas to be, or they send it to the animation studios to be animated, if it's not on model, they may draw it wrong. For the most part, it's a revisionist job to set characters on model. So here's an example. This is supposed to be uh, Beifang, I believe. Let's just say it was a still shot. This particular drawing may not be good enough. It's a revisionist job to clean this up and to put it on model. We're gonna take that. We're gonna see how her face turns, her cheekbones do this, her hair is this specific way. All right, you get the idea. Okay, another part of their job is the director can say, look at this specific board here. I don't like how her hand is by her side. I want her hand to be, I don't know, blocking her face from an attack or something. That's, a, that's also a revisionist job to take this arm and move it. Or maybe right here, a, a lot of times this will happen. They say this drawing is good, but, but her expression is wrong. We need her to be more concerned, not so angry. So it's often a lot of very simple tweaks like that is just moving an eyebrow, stuff like that. And I'm gonna get a little bit into the software now. What a lot of people are using is Storyboard Pro. That's what I'm in right now. I'm currently working on a project that I cannot show, but I can still give you examples from this. Okay, we'll take this shot for example. Cora was storyboarded in Storyboard Pro. So that means that all these had different layers. This fellow was cut out from the background. Typically, to make these shots more interesting, what they do is layer movements. Let's say this character's talking for like, a whole minute. We're going to do a very slight layer movement. Let's let's move the background. So I'm going to add a keyframe here. Add a keyframe here. I'm so I've got the background selected. I'm going to go to one of the keyframes, and I'm going to move this background slightly in one of these directions. All right. Now I'm going to play it back. Let's say he's talking. There's dialogue over this. All right. There's some movement to that. It's not completely still shot. It's it's not boring. This is also a revisionist job to say the director can say, can you go in here and add some background pans? to just make it feel a little bit more alive. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit, you know. Or as a revisionist, it can also be your job to determine what kind of camera movements there needs to be. So right here, maybe he's saying something that's a little bit more dire. So it's your job to kind of match that mood with your knowledge of cinematography. So in that case, what you would do, you would do a slight truck in, which is like the camera slightly zooming in, pushing in on the character. So that has a little bit more of a dire feel. That's a little bit of what uh, storyboard revisionists do. For the most part, you don't go straight into storyboarding. You start out as a revisionist. That's a good thing to do as well, is to learn through that process. All right, I'm gonna tell you how, do you how you build your portfolio to that point, and I'm gonna tell you how you could possibly go about getting the job. I was on a different show at the time. I was doing uh, background design, but I had a passion for, for designing and drawing characters. I built up my portfolio geared towards storytelling and character design. How is that good for storyboard revisionists? At the time, I worked kind of look like this. You've got storytelling, you've got character design, you have acting, camera usage. Uh, one thing I will point out that was wrong in my portfolio, or not necessarily wrong, but I could have worked on more was the perspective. The camera was typically right here. It was level with the characters, but I should have put the camera up here. I should have put the camera down here, drawn in crazy perspectives to show that I can do that. But the fact was, at the time, I couldn't do that because I wasn't forced to do that. So storyboard, uh, doing storyboard revisions, that really pushed me out of my comfort zone to where I can do that now. I was building my portfolio to have story, to have storytelling, to show that I could draw characters. It wasn't ambiguous, I was actually making designs for these characters, and that's important in storyboard revisions. That's important to show that you can do that because they need people who can match blobs to models. And it's okay if you can't do that perfectly. All they need to know is that you can work towards that. Okay, that's that's one half of it. That's one half of how I got the job. Okay, so now this part's kind of tough and I'm not gonna really explain how I did it because that was a very specific situation. I'll explain how I've seen other people do it. We gotta go back to the graph here. So all of this, all of this junk right here that's going on, it's being put together, it's being managed by the production team. There's production assistants, there's production coordinators, there's all types of jobs to be filled. And so what they're doing is they're taking the storyboards, they're taking the designs, they're taking all this stuff, 
and they're passing it on to people. They're file handling, they're shipping it, they're talking to the directors, talking, just talking to everybody and making sure everything's running properly. And this one individual that I'm talking about, she started out as a production assistant. At the time I was doing background design and I would see her come in to work every day. She was talking to people, she was getting to know the artists, getting to know the directors, and slowly she was telling them, just being honest, that she wanted to be a storyboard artist. And in this industry, a lot of people, they're, they're nice, genuine people, they want to help out. So if you let them know your goals, you show people that you're passionate and you're willing to learn and you're good to work with, it all, it all really helps. And eventually, like after a year or two, she became a storyboard artist on the show that she was a production assistant on. They could see her growth, they could see her skills improve, but definitely more importantly, she, she created a relationship with these people. I know actually a lot of people that got to be an artist through production. It's not the way that you have to do it, it's not the way I did it, but I know a lot of people have done it that way. Getting a job in production is a whole new thing, and my girlfriend, she was actually, before she was an editor, she was in production. So maybe I can make a video about that later to see how you can take those stepping stones into getting into animation. It's not the only way to do it, but it is a, it's pretty effective to build relationships. Okay, last thing I'm gonna go over, how do you build your, how do you, Okay, so if I were hiring on a TV show, all right, obviously I'm gonna wanna see your own storyboards, your own vision. The only thing I can advise there is that just watch all the animatics that you can watch, all the different types of animatics. The animatics for Korra and Avatar, they're amazing to watch. Disney has some good animatics. Uh, Rick and Morty, Adult Swim. Do some research, look at animatics, look at storyboards, and try to learn from them. All right, that's something that I can't hold your little hand and, and make you do it. You got to... You... No, no, okay. Um... Just do that on your own. The, but the only other thing that I can really advise, here's a really good example. I just looked up Cora model sheet. So remember what I was saying before, if you remember, is that you need to have focus. Try not to be broad. Try not to be like, well, I wanna work for Disney, I wanna work for DreamWorks, I wanna work for Barney, ba Barbie, Polly Pocket, this all. If you have a passion for something, if you have a passion for Disney, that means you need to gear your portfolio for Disney. Let's say you're gearing your portfolio to work for Studio Mirror, or for Avatar, or for the Avatar team. This is what I would like to see see as a starting out, uh, as a beginning storyboard revisionist. I would like to see this model sheet, and I would like to see you draw her in multiple perspectives and put her on model. So that means you'd start off with the mask and then show that you can put the character to model. All right, and the reason I have uh, Tenzin up here is because I'm using this as reference. It's great to have professional reference. Uh, this, is, this is often what I would do right here. I would do a draw through of the very basic shape, then I would move this sucker aside, and then from here, I would try to set him on model. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about of practicing in a smart way, okay? There's there's no guessing to this, all right? You try it, you fail, then you learn from where you failed. So let's say I'm trying to put him to model here. There's his arrow, there's all this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then I will move it back, and I will see specifically where I messed up. Look, this eye's not in the right spot. I will, un I will try to understand where I went wrong. And that's all it is, baby. It's just understanding, assessing the problems, and fixing them. So I'll go back, and then I'll try again. All right, and it can get pretty boring, so it's kind of your job to entertain yourself while doing this. Have, you have to have fun with it. You have to enjoy the learning process, or it's not gonna work. Also, it doesn't need to be from another TV show. You can create your own characters, and you can try to set them onto model. Okay, so here's the other thing. As for creating your own storyboards, you don't really need to be that intricate about the storyboards. If you look at my work, what I got hired off of was still frames, was still shots. It's not anything that has to be moving. It just needs to show that you're, you're capable of understanding camera and storytelling to a very minimum amount. So, if you like this video, if you like the content that I'm trying to